Welcome back to Construction Safety Students. My name is Ron Dotson. We're going to be talking about basic scaffolding safety and we're going to be using the AR model. Scaffolding safety really begins before we get to the work site, but with as far as the model is concerned, one of the first thing, the first thing we're going to be concerned about is ground stability. So the ground should be leveled as much as possible and compacted as much as is feasible. Okay. What I want to show here, students, is we're going to use this book if you can actually see it as an example of a mud seal. So this plate is going to take the weight that would normally be distributed on the diameter of this leg and actually uh, extend the same amount of weight over a different area so that it helps the ground not settle. This is a screw jack or a model of a screw jack. And as you can see the screw jack has holes in the corner so that we can actually secure it with nails or with screws to the mud seal. And then we have the screw jack goes, or the uh, side rails go down over top of the screw jack, and the screw jack is actually used to actually level the, the uh, base of the scaffolding section. And so this explains how you keep uh, your scaffolding uh, solid and secure and keep it from settling while, the work, while workers are actually performing the work on the scaffolding. Remember, this is going to be in place for several days, and you want to make sure and spend the time making sure that the base level is uh, level, plumb, square, and we have a good ground stability. As the scaffolding is being erected, the lower levels do not have to be fully planked so that you can pass your walk boards and your planks up from one level to another. It is also acceptable for you to access the scaffolding model using what looks like a ladder here on the side of the scaffolding. That is acceptable as long as uh, using portable ladders and so forth would create a greater hazard. Once we get up to the top working level, as you can see here, we want to make sure that the, that the working level stays fully planked. There can be no more than one inch between any of the planks unless a manufacturer's recommendation requests that there be additional clearance on the support braces. In this model you can see that we're using walk boards that actually have hooks that over top of the horizontal members keep the walk boards in place. You may, be, may encounter construction sites where you're using wood planks as walk boards. They have to extend over the horizontal support members by a minimum of 6 inches and a maximum of 12 inches. That way we don't have them sliding off. But you should consider using blocks of wood on the bottom or so forth to make a hook so that they don't slide off of the support members or move while workers are climbing on and off and while workers are moving back and forth on the work area. Access, once the scaffolding is erected, must be through one of these access holes, usually with a portable ladder, but it could be with a portable type of stair system or from a personnel hoist. While workers are on the top working level, you must have fall protection for them if they are more than 10 feet above the lower level. As you can see here, this scaffolding would be approximately 10 feet or more from the ground surface, and so fall protection would be required. On the front of the scaffolding, this is what we call the work face, or this is where the workers will actually be working on the wall, either doing plastering, painting, or bricklaying, or any other activity. And it would be open, so that we don't have to have cross bracing there, because it would get in the way of the work. But it can only be a maximum of 14 inches from the work face. And so the walk boards and the scaffolding must be in close proximity to the wall to prevent a worker from falling through. While working up there on the working level, access is used through the access hole. This is usually a portable ladder that's tied off. However, once access is gained, this hole must have be covered with a mid-rail. Otherwise, you do not have a complete guardrail system. A worker could possibly fall through that hole. Moving around to the back of the model, you can see here that we have cross bracing on the top working level. Cross bracing is acceptable as a mid rail in your guardrail system as long as it's between 20 and 30 inches and then you must add a top rail above your cross bracing. 
Top rails must be between 35 and 48 inches in height. Some additional hazards that you might see in this model is that we do not have a tow board. We have to guard against objects being kicked off of or falling off of the scaffolding. And we want to do that first of all by establishing a controlled access area underneath and around the scaffolding. Only those workers that need access to the scaffolding and will be performing the work or bringing materials to the scaffolding should be allowed in this area. Secondly, we should be using tow boards or netting uh, to keep any bricks, mud, hammers, whatever that's kicked off from falling down and hitting a worker in the head. Additionally, you may see that this top working level could have actual physical metal screens around it installed that would keep uh, objects from falling through. And if you do have solid screens on your scaffolding, then that would also serve as additional protection with your guardrail system. With this type of scaffolding, one of the things we also have to worry about is as we go up with our scaffolding, it becomes more and more unstable, and we have to worry about tipping. There is a ratio from height to base of 4 to 1. So as the height gets to be 4 times the length of the width of the scaffolding, we must secure this scaffolding to the building. We have to use the horizontal cross members to place the tying, bracing, or what is sometimes called guying to the building. And it must be retied an additional every 20 feet. So every 20 feet of height after the first set of uh, tying and bracing to the building we would follow up every 20 feet with that and that way we would ensure that uh, we were guarding against tipping. So this concludes our basic safety model uh, using the augmented reality section so that you have a good clear picture and good clear vision of what you might see on a typical job site.